It is customary for the monks to give the donors an offering of appreciation. This is usually a token sum in an envelope, which is presented with a kata to each pilgrim. The pilgrims are also given sticks of incense, so that they can in turn personally make offerings to the Sangha. The offering of incense to monks has many meanings. Firstly, it is the offering of fragrance which creates the aspiration that we may hold our vows and keep perfect samaya, which means commitment to my gurus. Incense also represents morality, and when we offer incense to the monks, it symbolizes the aspiration for attaining faultless morality. It also creates the causes to be born in clean and comfortable places. Burning of incense also symbolizes the burning of attachments and aspiring towards non-attachment is one of the key teachings of Buddhism. It does not mean that we should not enjoy ourselves, but that we should not be obsessed by any of our desires. The middle path says that you can enjoy nice things, but by having no attachment to them, we will not suffer when we don't have the things we want. How often have we been upset when we have lost something or someone close to us? And how long have we suffered? If you think about it, Practicing non-attachment is actually very logical and everything is impermanent and will eventually disappear. While offering incense, the pilgrims will offer prayers for the benefit of others and the removal of obstacles from Dharma practice. During this time, we can also dedicate our merits accumulated to all sentient beings and everyone who has ever been kind to us. The monks are now finishing the Lama Chopa Puja. Lama means teacher or guru, and chopa means offerings. A puja is a prayer session. It is very good karma or fortune to be in the presence of a Lama Chopa Puja. Only people who have been initiated can carry out these prayers, and it is even more powerful when the prayers are chanted by the Holy Sangha of Ganden. Chen Rinpoche explains to us that when we are in the presence of a puja, we are all blessed, purified of negative karma, and negative energies are quickly chased away. It is very healing for the body, but more importantly, for our minds. It temporarily calms our minds so that we can engage in deeper thoughts. And then, when we calm ourselves more and more, we are able to engage in deeper and deeper thoughts. These deeper thoughts become more habitual and stronger, and finally overwhelm all other thoughts. The Lama Chopa is also known as the offering to our spiritual masters. This practice is one of the expressions of devotion and appreciation towards the kindness of our gurus and the wisdom and knowledge they impart to us. The qualified guru from an authentic lineage is seen as supreme, as he or she is the one who will pass down the priceless treasures of the Buddha. These are his teachings on methods to liberate us from suffering and allow us to reach for enlightenment. The younger monks sit patiently in the courtyard outside the Lachi. They are also given a statue and a set of robes each. Despite the crowded, uncomfortable environment and their young age, especially the little ones, the young monks are happy to sit and wait to receive our offerings. It was such a humbling experience for all of us. The younger monks enter the monastery from a very early age. Tibetan families consider it a great blessing for the family if one of their sons enters the monastery. For Tibetans, who were a mostly nomadic people, entering the monastery was one of the means of getting an education. The opportunity to attend an illustrious monastic university such as Ganden is a blessing indeed. For these young monks, to have their own statue so early in their lives is relatively rare and is a blessing for both the monks and also for us. As the monks are all of different shapes and sizes, it would be an impossible task to make up their robes in full for them. So each monk was also given 150 rupees each for the stitching of their robes. After almost five hours of prayer, it was all over. The monks leave the Lachi to continue with their usual daily routine of lectures, study and debate. Before and while they leave the prayer hall, they recite the dedication prayer. May all conducive conditions arise and all obstacles be pacified. 
in order to increase infinitely the doctrine of the spiritual king Tsongkhapa. Their walking out into the world as they recite this prayer symbolizes a spreading of Tsongkhapa's teachings far and wide. Kachara pilgrims have the rare honor of taking a photo with the High Lamas of Ganden. By the smiles on all the pilgrims' faces, everyone was moved by the morning's offerings and inspired from the heart to help Ganden any way we can. We were even more touched later when we found out that the Lama Chopa Puja had not been compulsory and the sheer number of monks who participated showed us their humble appreciation of our offerings and their deep respect for Chemtu Kurimbuchi. We also learned from the monastery later that the 63 of us had been the largest group of pilgrims to ever visit Ganden and that today's offering was the first time that anybody had made offerings to every single monk in the monastery. Chem Toko Rinpoche pauses outside the Lachi for a moment to explain to us that it is very unusual to have photos with the abbots and high lamas. He then invited us to go to visit his college, Ganden Shatse, where they will be holding a Satrap Puja shortly. Ganden Shatse is just a short walk across the courtyard from Ganden Lachi. Shatse Monastery, right? Ganden Shatse. You come to my home now. We follow Chen Rinpoche to the audience room upstairs. You have to understand, these, this monastery is the extension of the original in Tibet. In Tibet, the original Ganden was built 600 years ago by Lama Tsongkhapa. And it was predicted by Lord Buddha himself. He also predicted the Shatse and Jansi belong to one monastery. But because of administration, it's separate. So myself, I'm responsible for Ganden Shatse Monastery. Geshe La representing the Ganden Shatse Educational Department, presents the body, speech and mind offerings to Rinpoche. And after exchanging blessings, he humbly requests Rinpoche to live long and to continue turning the wheel of Dharma.